A recent published article in the Lancet analyzed the association between the severity of the new coronavirus infection and a chronic illness. As a matter of fact, more than 50% of severe COVID-19 patients suffer from this condition. It is one of the root causes of fatal and debilitating outcomes from COVID-19. So what kind of disease is this? What causes it? And how could we prevent it? Welcome to Dr. Yang's Health Talk. Health is our own business. Traditional Chinese medical wisdom treats the condition's symptoms when it is acute and treats the root causes when it is chronic. Now, although Omicron is very infectious, the symptoms are relatively milder. And we can take a break and look into some fundamental problems we have not addressed since COVID-19 pandemic. Like many modern illnesses, this condition is not a disease, but a syndrome. In other words, although they have shared the features, the causes, the symptoms, developments, and outcome are different from individual to individual. We name this illness metabolic syndrome. We sometimes call it syndrome X, insulin resistance syndrome, or dysmetabolic syndrome. How do we define and diagnose metabolic syndrome? To meet the diagnostic criteria, you need to have at least three of the following five conditions. First, you must have high blood pressure. Systolic pressure is over 130, and diastolic pressure is over 85. This increase in blood pressure is not familial or due to other causes, but factors we shall discuss later. Second, you must have high blood sugar. Your fasting blood sugar exceeds 100 milligrams, or you are already taking blood sugar-lowering medication. But the high blood sugar is not due to type 1 diabetes, which affects mostly the younger people due to their inability to produce insulin, a blood sugar-lowering hormone. Third, you have to have excessive central or waste fat. How much is excessive? If your man your waist should not be more than 30 inches. If you're a woman, it should not be more than 35 inches. How to measure it? We'll show you in another short video. Fourth, your good cholesterol HDL must be less than 40 mg for men and less than 50 mg for women. Fifth, you have triglycerides that exceeds 150 mg, or you're already taking cholesterol-lowering medications. If you only have one or two of the above conditions, you are not yet having metabolic syndrome. Many people do not experience obvious symptoms until it becomes very serious. Thirsty, frequent urination, fatigue, dizziness, and blur vision are common among them. How many people have metabolic syndrome? More than you think. In the United States, about 30% of the population has metabolic syndrome. That's almost 100 million people. So what is the most significant risk of having a metabolic syndrome? In short, having metabolic syndrome increases the risk of developing all kinds of chronic illnesses and the death from these chronic conditions. Specifically, having metabolic syndrome increases the risk of developing and dying from cardiovascular disease and heart attacks cerebral vascular disease and stroke, cancer and autoimmune disease, and type 2 diabetes. More importantly, having metabolic syndrome increases the risk of having severe symptoms and a death from COVID-19, according to the Lancet analysis. The vaccine alone may not be enough to protect us without controlling the pandemics of metabolic syndrome. This may explain why the United States has the most advanced medical technology and facilities, the earliest invented and widely used vaccine, its infection and death rates remains high. We really need to address the health of the host and fight the invading virus. The question is, why do people get metabolic syndrome? What are the risk factors of developing it? The first is age. As we age, the function of our internal organs decline 
and the various health problems arise, 50% of people with metabolic syndrome are over 65 years old. The second is related to race. For example, Hispanics, especially Hispanic women, are more likely to develop this condition. Caucasians are more likely to develop than the African Americans. But the latter has a higher incidence, and there are many people of other races who develop the illness too. Why? This is related to the third reason, maybe the most important, lifestyle. Drinking alcohol and too much coffee or caffeinated beverage, eating too many carbohydrates and added sugar, especially fructose, saturated fatty acids, staying up too late, sleeping too little or too much, lack of exercise, contribute to the development of metabolic syndrome. People with the above lifestyle tend to develop insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, meaning the cells in the body are no longer responsive to insulin, which helps maintain regular blood sugar and supply energy to the cells. As a result, they suffer from dysfunction of multiple organ systems, especially cardiovascular and immune system. That is why COVID-19 hurts people with metabolic syndrome the most. They are also prone to develop obstructive sleep apnea, causing a short period of hypoxia, disrupted sleep, depression, and chronic fatigue. Sadly, I have observed firsthand that some once pretty healthy young people in their 30s developed metabolic syndrome very quickly as they have adopted an unhealthy lifestyle with extreme stress from work. What can you do if you have metabolic syndrome or want to prevent it from happening to you? First, you have to be patient and persistent. This illness does not develop in a day or two, and it will not disappear in a day or two. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let's start with some of the following simple steps. Number one, have 30 minutes of physical activities at least four days a week. It doesn't have to be vigorous. Just get yourself a little sweaty. Number two, add more vegetables, plant-based proteins, and healthy fat into your diet. Choose fresh and seasonal whole foods from the local produce. Number three, avoid animal meats raised with antibiotics and hormones. Number four, avoid fructose from added sugar and fruit juice. Number five, try intermittent fasting two or three days a week. Start with 16 hours fast. Number six, reduce your belly fat and keep the waist in a healthy normal range. Number seven, drink less coffee or caffeinated beverage. Number eight, stop smoking. If you can practice more than one step described above for more than three months, you will definitely experience the benefits. Finally, and most importantly, you must learn to manage your stress with meditation, good sleep, and a spiritual practice. Health is really our own business. No one can bring it to you or do it for you. I welcome you to share your insights and experience on the topic in the comment area. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it helps. See you next time.